if there was one anchoring philosopher that I would name who anchored these things I learned in that course of comparative religions, it would be uh, Sri Aurobindo, the great Indian independence leader and thinker educated in England, led the most radical wing of the Indian independence movement, more radical, say, than Gandhi. And he was in jail. He then developed into a, a very deeply realized contemplative, a mystic, and he wrote from his experiences, his mystical experiences. And to sum up his worldview, and uh, Roger, of course, God, you've contributed to this through the years in all your various ways. When asked to name it, the lineage, as I was uh, and have ever, always been, what is your lineage? I uh, have given it various names, but uh, to me, the one that has lasted the longest is simply to call it evolutionary panentheism, the doctrine that the divine is transcendent to the world and imminent in the world. It's panentheistic, as, you know, in distinction from pantheism, which says this, the world disclosed to us mainly through the five senses or whatever your current count of the physical senses happen to be. Some people say the seven senses, or it's always changing, but that's pantheism. Theism, you know, in the Judeo-Christian tradition is God's up there, we're down here. This world is the product first of creation, then the fall. So we're separated from, from the divine, or in Indian thought, we are separated by samsara, the world which is maya, etc. I mean, so anyway, it's panentheism is uh, embracing the whole, and then necessarily it has to be evolutionary because the world is evolving. That's a fact. Mm -hmm.